Hi, everyone. Hope you had a good lunch. Uh, we have Vuk right here, uh, and he'll be uh, speaking about Sunrise of... And the slide is gone. He'll be speaking uh, on behalf of Epam, but before he starts speaking, uh, I want to uh, bring uh, Milos to the stage to speak a little bit about Epam. Thank you. So, yeah, first, welcome all. Uh, I would like to introduce Vuk, uh, but, but before he begins, I would like to say a few words about EPAM Systems. EPAM Systems is an American global company, like a public company, and exists from like 1993, so it's like almost 30 years now uh, in the market, but in Serbia, we are here for like one year now. Um, EPAM Systems exists in over 50 different locations all over the world, and um, Let's say that we are cu currently counting like 70,000 people all over the world. In Serbia, we have about 700 people uh, and we have offices in Belgrade and Novi Sad. But, uh, but as you already know that all, almost all IT companies are supporting like remote work. So we have offices in Belgrade and Novi Sad, but we are also like uh, working remotely uh, mostly. Let's say so Vuk is coming from Niš and um, that's one, one, of the, one, of, one of our example. Uh, we have our stand on the ground floor. So if you have any questions uh, regarding EPAM, regarding like what we're doing, uh, who are our clients, like uh, feel free to, to, to step by and uh, we will try to answer on all of your questions. So without further ado, I would like to give uh, Vuk, uh, Mike, so you can continue. Thank you. Thank you all. Good afternoon. Welcome to the talk where software and system engineering meet real life problems and situations. I'm a software engineer from IPAM, and I'll be more than glad to introduce you to the topic of platforms as services. So let's dive in. But before we even dive into the world of platforms as services, you should ask yourself a few questions. The first one, are you choosing the right cloud service model for your project? Would you dare to step into creating your own platform as a service? And you'll learn how to combine different cloud service models, architect your own platform as a service, and apply it in bioinformatics. And you may ask, but why is that important? Well, did you know that there is a high probability that your company is spending 25 to 200% more money on cloud services just because of technical errors in terms of implementing the arch architecture in the right way. And not only architecture, but the overall flow in terms of CI, CD, build phases, and the maintenance. And that really is a problem. But how are our pro pro problems solved? Why do models of cloud services exist? There are hundreds of different cloud service models. But it all comes down to four base ones. Now, if you take a look at the history of cloud services, you would notice how new cloud service providers really are. They are constantly evolving, but, um, and I mean, each day they're providing something new for you, of course, and for applicable price. And before a company that wants to run their own business would host it in their own buildings and they would maintain those machines by themselves. They would manage networking, runtime and the application itself in the end. And then cloud service providers came into play by saying, oh, screw our ongoing and stable business ideas. We are going to be a cloud provider. There's money in that. And they picked that road and actually did an amazing job. Why? Because a new line of communication between companies and cloud providers has opened. And in that option, uh, it allows them to manage the maintenance of the machines, their networking and virtualization, offering you a way to configure out of the box and use them straight away as virtual machines, just as you would do every other day. But still, considering how fast managers expect from engineers to get the application up and running, a step forward was needed. Cloud providers, of course, created the new model, taking care even of the runtime and the operating system. 
And uh, in such a way that the only thing you need to do is to write your code and deploy it. Oh, they took all the fun, right? But why should you use a platform as a service when you need to get things done fast and when your system engineers do not want to see your face? And the fourth model would be taking an already functional service, an API of some, of some sort or an SDK and integrating it in your infrastructure. What? You can mix them? Yes, you can. And that's actually happening very, very often. You want to preserve some workload on premises while some workload is required to run on a cloud provider instance. Let it be a platform as an instance. It's a super powerful concept because by combining these models, you uh, basically achieve a great infrastructure. Most of the times engineers just pick one model and go with it forever, creating thousands of app services, AWS lambdas, for example, even at places where it doesn't really need to be. But how do we make a step forward? What is the next step? Well, let's analyze platforms as services even deeply. Platforms as services have two outlets. One of them is a software as a service outlet meant to be used by the person who's setting up the environment. That person can even be an automated script and you can always aim for that if you want to save money and time. It's a, always a good idea. Since it's a good choice for APIs, the other outlet is the one where you, where you are plugging in the rest of your infrastructure. It can be your presentation layer, so it can be a front end, but it can also be your on-premise, or it can even be an infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service, why not? Combining those models optimizes the, the expenses. So if you want to be a cloud provider, you need to make sure that this part, basically this side, that on that side, everything is encapsulated behind those two outlets and that those two outlets have a proper API and SDK for setting up. So those are the very, very basic steps. And also offering different types of sources for, uh, for your application allows you to create a perfect CI CD flow. In other models, uh, for each environment, you'd have a different machine running. And um, it's technically the same behind the scenes if you take a closer look at platforms and services, but it's abstracted out. So it is given to you as a single service when, where you can easily manage it. And uh, as a customer, especially the one that wants to mix different cloud services, the, clo the goal that you should have in your mind is to put an API gateway of some sort or a proxy in between. And you can connect this part, of course, can be the presentation layer or any other service as well. And it's like a connector of all those components. And of course, you can then have a nice overview of available environments and endpoints. Don't forget, don't forget, those are cloud service providers. Through software as a service outlet, you should allow your customers to adapt the platform to, as a service to their needs. What does that mean? Well, there's the, I mean, that's the whole point of that. Well, that's the part where the revenue flows in because from an outlet like this, you can create a subscription system uh, and dedicate them a certain number of resources that can be really pretty much adapted to the resource needs and the budget of your clients. Now, how everything works behind the scenes when you scale something up and down? Well, uh, platform, platforms and services are just a wrapped infrastructure as a service. And um, infrastructure as a service are just wrapped on premises. There is an abstraction layer bet uh, between them, right? And there is an event system, an event flow between. And once you change scaling co configuration, um, some kind of event will, di uh, will dispatch through an SDK or an API of some sort, telling the configuration of on-premises to scale up or down or to allocate more resource units for the workload to be completed. And having a good scaling configuration, not too high, not too low, but slightly above your expectations and dynamically adapting as you go is the perfect solution for you. And before you start building anything, you need to have a proper authentication and authorization system for almost every app you do. Integrating that in the system 
will be painful if you do it later. But a common tactic uh, with platform as a services is to provide an auth flow where the provider will take care of the authentication system and the roles, but you'll take the care of authorizing them to access the specific resources on your API through those roles. And uh, let's see how, it, how the flow looks like. So basically, we have a front end of some sort. If you remember well, this doesn't need to be a front end. This can be an AWS Lambda. It can be an Elastic Beanstalk unit. It can be anything else. It, it, the, we will have a layer of the identity service, middleware, and backend. And how the flow looks like is that the front end will exchange credentials with an identity service, as normally you would receive access and refresh token, which would be the auth data. And then using that some kind of middleware, you will be able to authorize your request right here, and then call the controller, which is your backend application containing that claims inside your access token. And of course, your front end will be able to authorize the requests like that, because each time you send a request, you'll have that access token in there. And when it expires, of course, you'll refresh it using the refresh token. But of course, impl implementing that on your own can be right, really painful. And uh, you as a platform as a service provider can, it's not, an, uh, it's not a mandatory thing, you can provide uh, integrated authorization and authentication system. For example, Microsoft Azure does that, even AWS has that, and you can, you can explore that more. And uh, all of that wraps up the whole high-level picture of the engineering side of platforms as services. And now, wait, biology and platforms as services? The idea behind them, the idea behind platforms as services can be applied here too. How? Well, you have a whole different approach of data. Hmm. Why? Well, first, you have different input-output de devices, I.O. devices, and you have most likely a new operating system stack. And you have different users, different purpose. Your users will be exactly your patients that will use your uh, application and also the infrastructure within. And uh, we would ask, OK, but what are those I.O. devices? Well, before they would be like some computers that would process some data, move around data. And in this scenario, those are some devices that can take input from the patient itself. For example, device for getting measurements of uh, uh, health parameters in terms of uh, heart problems, or if you want to take notes of the brain signals and other important as well. And we have three devices that we can take care of. For example, those are just uh, the ones that are basically people most fa familiar with. And uh, you would use them to later on build some kind of events. We'll talk, about late, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later because we need to see, okay, how the flow looks like in terms of comparison between the software engineering one and the bioinformatics one. How a platform as a service integrates in there. And if we compare those two models, you'll see that the idea of the infrastructure is based on those devices. So here, those are the computing units, and here is the infrastructure itself, which, is the, which are those medical devices. And here, you can see that patients can also be like the part of the infrastructure in terms of using it. There may be a, some kind of abstraction layer in between, but you get the idea. And, um, as you can see, the computing units are just being changed by those medical units. And the event flow remains the same, where basically the core part is in, in this model are those medical units because it heavily depends on the data that they, that they produce. And let's see an example on uh, EEG device, which uh, uh, analyzes brain signals. And we can, of course, with any device that can produce signals, inputs, and, and outputs, it's very easy to take data from there and use it somewhere. Well, we can, from those events, we can leverage the data out of it and turn them into events. Those events will be dispatched by the SDK that developers will later use in their applications. And for example, that's how you create software for a smartwatch that, that is based on some activity. And uh, you, 
so based on the value, you can fire different actions, such as when a gamma value is reached or when a specific value is reached or if uh, EEG stops and starts and so on. There are countless, of course, possibilities. And each object, of course, despite its name or the signal name, would have some kind of right payload, timestep and other data, maybe even authorization data that you will leverage later in the app. So even that authorization data comes into again. So it's really important to understand the previous part and integrate it in there. The idea remains the same. And if we want to see, okay, but this object, this payload object, where does it integrate into? Well, if we take a look at the whole flow again, you can see that payload is right between the platform and the infrastructure. It is being exchanged in that event flow that we mentioned be, be, before. And later on, developers that are building software as a service on that platform as a service that is being sold can easily leverage that through SDKs. If you take a look, uh, the same thing happens, for example, with AWS SDK. You have an SDK of some sort. Why not have it in, in the medical industry too, right? We can have many countless possibilities. And with this idea, the industry can use uh, basically an, an abstract out platform as services and the, that part with the infrastructure, which means that this whole graph, this whole idea can be applied to any industry you want as soon as you have the data and the ability to uh, transfer it from the infrastructure and the platform so your developers can use it. And if we want to wrap everything up, on-premises are not bad. Mix your services, create an efficient infrastructure of various models and, and optimize your costs. Cloud services are your building blocks, remember that. So from an infrastructure as a service, you will build up a platform as a service and aim for the modularity and avoid overusing some mo uh, models. Each of them exists for a reason. And of course, as seen before, the idea can be applied really in any industry. Thank you for listening. Let me know if you have any questions. You can also, if you have any other questions, contact me on LinkedIn. Thank you.